let's see here. I like this song. It's a little different, but I'll give you this rendition of it here by Clarence Sexton, which is pretty cool. The way he sings is sort of like Lester Roloff, and I'll tell you kind of the story of it, but it's kind of interesting. Shine. We'll understand it. Up here. I want you to find a hymn in our own hymn book here, 395. Tempted and tried, we're oft made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long. While there are others living about us, never molested, though in the wrong. Father alone, we'll understand. Amen. We'll know all about it. Father alone, we'll understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Oh, yes, let's sing that together. If you're visiting with us, remain seated, would you please? You may need the words, folks. 395. Let's stand if you call this church your home. On the second. When it has come and taken our blood, blood, it is our home so lonely and drear. Then will we wonder why others cry. sing, I really did, I thought I could sing until I was about 23 and then someone gave me a cassette tape of Lester Roloff then I learned how to sing you know, he hit that word and then he'd hit that word and sing like that and uh, I'm sorry, it just took hold, when we see Jesus, you know, and I, I learned to sing that Cheer up, my brother, you know. I tell you, he just had a, he had, a, he had a bad effect on me, just a bad effect on me. Let's sing that verse. When we see Jesus. Here we go. When we see Jesus.
say in just a car, someone's going to greet you if you're seated. When they do, we'd like you to stand with us. We're sure glad you're here. God bless you for coming our way. And so, choir, let's sing it. Father along, together. Father coming we'll sing it one more time glad to have all these friends who visit with us Seth and Julie over here wave at me will you God bless them that's great and Charlie just told me Miss Martin got to come home that's great wonderful God hears and answers prayer and pray for Joe and Karen God bless them they're wonderful people wonderful people let's sing one more time just a chorus and uh, we'll have prayer here in a moment Father understand it all by and by you know there's a lot of things that we don't understand in this life right now and but that's some good advice and a good song cheer up my brother live in the sun amen live in the sunshine live in the son of god and, and live in his brightness and glory and uh, try to focus on the promises of god don't try to trace the providences of god through his works but Trust God in his promises. Trace him through his promises and pray his promises and claim his promises. That's what we do as Christians. That's what we have to do in order to have the victory that we need to in this life. Can you all hear me okay? Am I loud enough? I don't look like I'm loud enough here, but maybe I am. Let's see. Am I loud enough? You think I am? Luke says I'm loud enough. All right. It just looked like it was down a little bit, and I don't like. I'm I get a little concerned because once people get on devices, they can't. They I thought it was low. Okay, good. More gain. That's what. That's what. Authorized Mike is going through his ghetto phase. I don't know. He lives in, in Texas. I didn't even think there was a gangsta Texas, but, but, Authorized Mike is is having a a. Uh, a midlife crisis here or an early life crisis. He's a young man, I think, but he's having an early life crisis of being a gangsta in Texas. So uh, I didn't know there was some of those, but I guess there are. Now, can you all hear me okay? Is it better? Is it coming in louder? Okay, good, the sound. I always get concerned about the devices that people listen on because some of these devices, uh, the I, I want to make sure the audio is loud uh, for people when they when they listen to it because they're, sometimes you're on an, uh, an old iPhone, and I like iPhones, don't get me wrong, but I would like to take the guy that invented the speaker system on some of those older versions of iPhone and, like, make him listen to things that you can hardly listen to in a room by himself for like eight hours and see if he wouldn't have engineered a better design for the stupid speaker system that he put in that stupid iPhone. All right. Don't get me wrong. I love iPhones. I do. I mean, I have one. I've got the iPhone eight and I love it, but I was, this one's got a good speaker, but let me tell you what, I went through some phases of iPhones where I was like, you can't hear anything on it. And if I have one complaint, about it now that i'm on this uh, i i might as well continue on i've got the earbuds and i'm just a little upset that the sound on those are not a bit louder i really think those things ought to be a little bit louder uh and i'm not that old and i think i hear pretty good i think my hearing's okay 
But anyway, so that's my complaint. I don't know. Maybe the the second series they boosted it and it's better. I don't know. But uh, I listen. I love iPhones, but I'm going to tell you. And if you don't know how to use a smartphone, buy an iPhone because it's easy to use. If you buy an Android, you'll never figure out how to use it. You'll still be trying to figure out how do I use it. How does anybody do anything on an Android? And how come none of their apps work? Anyway, this is this is this is Friday morning's rant here. What? Why don't their Why don't their um, apps ever work? I remember when I had Androids back in the day before I bought my first, I think it was an iPhone 6 or an iPhone 5. I don't remember. But I'll tell you what, I had Androids and I bought the best ones and none of their apps ever worked. I was like, these things don't do anything. Anyway, the but maybe the newer ones are better. And it's been years, so I haven't used an Android really. But to me, I'm just like, eh, whatever. I just use an iPhone because it works. I know if I push a button, it works. If I use an app, it works. Anyway, so there's my rant for the for that anyway. Mary and I have old flip phones. Well, Carl, you live in Pakistan or Afghanistan or you Pakistan or whatever you call that stan out there. And you don't have to have technology. You can live out in the weeds somewhere and you don't have to. But in America, I have to communicate with people. So I have to have I have to have this stuff. Otherwise, I can't even talk to you people. I can't get text messages from people. I can't do anything. So, you know, and I'm not that texter guy that can do that little girly thing in high school that goes dot, 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 dot for one letter. I can't do that because you know what I want to do with that? Break, 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 break. I will snap that thing in half. I text with a keyboard, a real keyboard. And half the time I text from my Mac with people that have iPhones. Anyway. Um, let's see. Wow, with that Apple logo, I would have thought you'd be aware of the iPhone. I would thought. Oh, here it is. You know what? I Thank you for opening up an extremely fun rant for me. Okay, here comes the spooky villa. Are you ready? Luke, you gotta get me the spooky. You gotta get me the spooky. Remember, this is Friday and I can do what I want pretty much. Um listen, you got to you got to get me some spooky music because here it is. Here it is. Oh, here it is, man. Don't you know what the I stands for on the iPhone? I know. And I was just thinking to myself, guess what? Androids, they're Christian. And guess what? Guess what else is Christian? Bill Gates. He's got to be a Christian. He's got to be. So if you have a Windows computer, then you're Christian. But if you have an Apple, you worship the devil. Okay, okay, here we go. Let's go to Vane Janglingville. If I could get you something right now and I could say, let's all move over to Vane Janglingville. That ought to be a town. If I wrote a modern day Pilgrim's Progress for Christians on the internet, it would be called Vane Janglingville. That's what it'd be called too because everybody, not everybody, but many of those people online get into vain janglingville. Do, 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 do. I mean, they go off into the Twilight Zone, spooky Alex Jones nonsense, creepyville, weird vain jangling over, don't you know that the bit, the apple, I thought you were smarter to know that the apple, you mean like it represents fallen man? Oh, that's a surprise. You mean the world is antichrist? You mean the world is antichrist? Oh, I'm shocked. I thought they all love Jesus. Right? Anyway, so here's my point. Are you all having a hard time hearing me? Maybe you started out. Somebody said they were having a hard time hearing me, but I don't think so. So here's the thing, okay? I, anyway, those those are just side rants that I like to do. You know, I agree to disagree. Apple hates God as much as Microsoft and Google do. Yeah. Well, that's for, sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Doug, I really don't think there's a sanctified smartphone out there. I haven't seen one of those yet. Have you? There's not a sanctified water company. There's not a sanctified oil company. There's not a, I don't think there's anything that's sanctified out there. 
except God's people. I think the world, I think the world is antichrist. <laughs> I just love it when people get off on stuff like that, though. Don't you know the secrets of the eyeball? Don't you know the half-bitten apple? Don't you know the earth is flat, loser? Don't you know it? Uh... <laughs> Listen, these rants are going to be saved and people are going to use them against me, but I really don't care. Yes, Luke is cracking up over here. Cracking them up one egg at a time. Anyway, so listen. That that was my morning technology rant. In the world, but not of it. That's right. You still have to use some project products. Projects. I almost said projects. Products, unless you're going into the woods. And even if you go into the woods, even if you go into the woods, you better take something with you. Right? Eventually, we will have to unplug from all these devices. And when we do, you'll know it. But I will tell you something right now and be very clear with you. I want to warn you of something, okay? Once you do, you are still going to be tracked by the Antichrist beast system. You will not escape the beast system. Nope. I've seen people that try, man. They're going to do the underground. They're going to do the underground church. They're going to go underground. They're going off grid. Yeah, right. There ain't no off grid with the Antichrist. They're spirits. They're beasts. They smell blood. They know where they're at. Right? They're beast. I wasn't going to really talk about the vein jangling thing because I want to save that for a for a broadcast. I want to talk about vein jangling. But... Paper maps, I prefer way better. I'd prefer them too, Andre, if I could read them. But I can't read them, so I let Siri read them for me. Hey, Siri. Oops, I should have done that. I summoned Siri. You rang. Summoned Siri. <laughs> I would like her to respond to me, you rang. That would be cool if I could program that to uh, her to do that. People keep calling me from weird numbers. What is going on here? Anyway, so tomorrow, Thomas Havis, YouTube listener, will be with me all day, with us all day as we go off and we preach and we tract and we do all that fun stuff. Pray for our printer. It, it's, it's printing in psychedelic colors. It's printing in weird 3D looking colors as we try to make Halloween tracks, so we can't use... We can't, we can't use color. We have to use black and white tracks, so we're probably going to go buy some orange paper today. But just pray for us that we get that equipment working right because we're trying to print 3,000 tracks for tomorrow. And nevertheless, it has been a challenge uh, to try to do that. Because last year we handed out, I think it was like 2,500 tracks at that event. And, and then we have to, then we, the next thing we have to do is preach at the Gopher football game outside of it. Oh my, will they all be happy with us. Now those go if they lose, they're gonna trample us. Remember how mad they got last time? Were you there, Luke? You weren't there. Luke wasn't there, but I'll tell you something right now, man. Were they mad? They came storming out of that place. And no, I did not have the opposing. I did not have the opposing team's colors on. 
I just was standing there. We were all preaching, and one of my guys got kicked in the stones. Another guy, another guy, <laughs> Garrett. Those those rabid lesbians came out and started beating him up. <laughs> that lady was crazy, man. <laughs> anyway, I think that was that event. And then I think the banners got tore down. And the crowd went wild. So anyway, it was kind of crazy time. So pray for us for safety there that that I have to turn my volume all the way up to hear you. I think you should reset it. Like re uh, refresh your your um yeah refresh everything there because I I think it should be fine because this is where the mic's coming in at right we got this on yeah. full blast yeah, it's in the yeah yeah everything's good yeah we we got it maybe you're just hard of hearing maybe you're getting old that's what happens to me well I'm getting old anyway I'm gonna be 43 in a week oh man a week from tomorrow I'm gonna be 43. November 2nd. Oh. oh, man. Here it comes. Getting old. Anyway, well, enough of 20, 25 minutes of me ranting on you. Actually, that was like, I we did do two songs that were like 10 minutes long. So, But anyway... Like I said, it's Friday, so I like to have fun on Fridays and kind of make everybody else mad. Not really. I don't try to make people mad. It just happens naturally for me. If I say something, then somebody's going to get mad at me. It's pretty much how it goes on a daily basis. Wow, they sob their eyes out when the Vikings play. They lose. Well, they must sob a lot because the Vikings lose a lot. <laughs> All right, here we go. I think we're going to start out with the Pope here. The crazy Pope. Where is he at here? Crazy Pope, where are you? That's not it. Oh, I have like a double thing here. Okay, let's see here. Where's my search button? There it is. All right. We'll look at the Pope here. Yep. You're making apple jokes. Luke's making cracking apple jokes. All right, here we go. It's the Pope. Hey, everybody. Now watch the Pope. Trick Fred out of his fruity pebbles. No, he's not going to do that. But watch what he does. He's going to worship this statue. And we're going to talk about what this thing is. But it's very familiar to the Pope. He knows full well what it is. weird so the pope takes funny head dude from that from that lady but that's not a dude dude's a man okay that thing is a guy or that thing is a or that that thing's a chick it's a woman it's a it's a false god video footage 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 of the indigenous ritual that took place in the vatican gardens on october where we're better for it to take place where better? Come on. I mean, it's got to take place right in the Vatican's garden. I mean, what's a garden? Uh, a grove? So why don't we just call it what it is? Meanwhile, back at the Vatican Grove, at the Bat Cave, where the Pope is worshiping devils, here we go. He's worshiping Pacamama. Can you say Pacamama? Pacamama. Video footage of the indigenous ritual that took place in the Vatican Gardens on October 4th as a prelude to the opening of the Amazon Synod 
shows Pope Francis being presented with the controversial wooden Pacamama. So in other words, you could call it a statue of your mama. <laughs> the Pope's mama. Your mama. Okay. If there's anybody that has a, a, a mama complex, it's definitely the Pope. Okay. The footage shows an indigenous woman approaching Pope Francis with the wooden statue. They bow to each other. She then blesses herself. The Pope then imitates her and blesses himself. Everybody's blessing themselves. She reaches for his hand and shakes it. The Pope then appears to reach out and touch the statue before proceeding to bless it. Oh, he blesses the statue. Well, what are you blessing there, Francis? Francis, what are you blessing? Well, Francis is... He didn't want to say what it was. See, Francis, and the official Vatican response was, uh, be quiet. But let me show you from a simple Wikipedia article. Let me show you what Francis is blessing here. Francis is blessed his mama. Okay, his mama goddess. Pacamama is a goddess revered by the indigenous people of the Andes. She is known as the Earth Time Mother. Okay, so let's back up. You know how the Pope worships the Earth? You know how, how the Pope, uh, he wants to, like, preserve the environment. He wants to, like, he worships Mother Earth and all that good stuff. Bad stuff, I guess I should say. You know that? Like, the Pope, how he's, like, into, like, the, the um, environment. And we got we to gotta save the environment type stuff. In Inca mythology, Pacamama is a fertility goddess. Oh, there you go. With all false religions, you have to have the perverted sexual religion along with idol worship. Is it not the same in Deuteronomy chapter 18? Does it not warn those people, warn the Israelites not to get into those things? And, and, and what is it liken it to? Homosexuality fornication, bestiality, uh, pedophilia, all those things are accompanied with worshiping false spirits or false gods or goddesses. Romans chapter 1 says they worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is God blessed forever. Amen. Right? Right? So, Pacamama is a fertility goddess who presides over planting and harvesting, embodies the mountains, and causes earthquakes. She is also an ever-present and independent deity who has her own self-sufficient and creative power to sustain life on this earth. Sounds like a feminist to me. Yeah, it sounds like the Shekinah. <laughs> Remember that guy's weird video? Brother Nathan? That guy over in Russia. I haven't seen that guy's videos forever. Boy, is he a nut. Her shrines are hollowed rocks on bowls of legendary trees. And her artists envision her as an adult female bearing harvests of potatoes and cocoa leaves. Well, that's nice. Everybody likes cocoa leaves. Right? The four cosmological Quechua principles. You could turn the air on. It's hot in here, man. Water, earth, sun, moon. Oh, claim Pacamama as their prime origin. Priests sacrifice llamas, llamas, guinea pigs. Well, nobody wants those around anyway. And elaborate miniature burned garments to her. Pacamama is the mother of the Inti, the sun god, and Mama Killa, the moon goddess. Mama Killa, that sounds like a rapster's, that sounds like a rapster's idol. Yo, that's Mama Killa. That's her name, Mama Killa. I swear there's a lot of rap songs that say, I'm a killa. So that must be their god, the Mama Killa. Paka Mama is said to also be the wife of Inti, her son. Well, that's just creepy. But remember, that's all. Isn't it interesting that all of those things, like Tamu's, that's right. It's the same story told over and over again. But isn't it interesting 
that when God laid down these laws, he said, don't do this. When thou art, uh, Leviticus chapter 18, when thou art come into the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, that's to Moloch, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination of the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God drive them out from before thee. Doth drive them out. For all these nations which shalt, which thou shalt possess hearkened unto observers of times. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do so. So God says, don't do that. And when you move on to the, to, to the chapters down the way, you learn about the different things that God hated, the different gods and the different, the different um, duties that they had, the civilities that they had and all those things. It is the same thing. It's the sons of God, daughters of men. That's all it is. It's the goddess worship. It's the fertility God worship. It's all of those things. That's all that it is. It's all that it is. It's the same thing. So that's Pacamama. That's Mother Nature. And as Andean cultures form modern nations, Pacamama remains the benevolent giving and a local name for Mother Nature. Right? Here's the Pacamama Museum in Argentina. Well, that's not creepy at all. Look at that weird thing up on that thing's head. Look at that. Let's do a close-up there. Ooh, looky there. Look at that. Tell me it's not cool to do close-ups like that, everybody. Look at that. Visit my museum. Uh, no, I don't think we'll visit Pacamama. Look at all these weird symbols. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, look. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. What do you suppose that is? Anything else in here we could see that might be of interest to us while we're looking through here? Well. Hmm. Boy, that's some creepy stuff. Look at this guy right here. Look what he's doing. Hmm. Interesting. So, you have all the tribal art and all the weird stuff that's going on there. But that's the museum for Pacamama. Pacamama has her own museum. Whoops. There we go. Uh, Pacamama also translated as Mother Earth, but a more literal translation would be World Mother. The Inca goddess can be referred to in multiple ways, the primary way being Pacamama. Well, what's interesting about this is that Roman Catholicism worships a woman. They worship the queen of heaven. All right? They worship the queen of heaven. And the pope is only worshiping the queen of heaven in another culture. Uh, Pacamama and Inti worship are benevolent deities in an area known I can't even pronounce. That's weird. It's the name of the former Inca Empire, and the region stretches through the Andean Mountains in present-day Bolivia, Ecuador, Chile, Peru, and northern Argentina. So they, they like to... Let's see. Oh, the festivals. Look at this. The festival coincides with Shrove Tuesday, also celebrated as Carnival or Mardi Gras. Hmm. Well, let's see if there's any other fun facts here before we move on. So, the Pope's a witch. I mean, that's basically how you sum that up. The Pope is a witch. There's, there's really no other way to sum it up. But... He's a witch. He's the head of the he's the head of the mysteries. He walks around as Mystery Babylon, all over his clothes. He walks around with the mother goddess worship. All right, that's what he does. That's who he is. The Pope's a witch. It's really not that hard to understand. 
There's been a recent rise in New Age practice among white and Andean mestizo peoples. There is weekly ritual worship, which takes place on Sundays and in includes invocations to Pacamama. Wow. Although there are some references in Spanish, inside the temple there's a large stone with a medallion on it, symbolizing the New Age group and its beliefs. I bet that's weird. A bowl of dirt on the right of the stone is where is there to represent Pacamama because of her, statu her status as Mother Earth. As a Mother Earth. Many rituals related to Pacamama are practiced in conjunction with those of Christianity. Well, of course. To the point that many families are simultaneously Christian and Pacamamalists. Um, no, they're not. They might be Catholic. They might be Catholic, but they are not Christian. Pacamama is sometimes synchronized as the Virgin of Candelaria. Well, let's look at this. You ready for Creepville? Here we go. Time to get creepy. Look at that thing. So the Virgin. Here is the goddess Pacamama, alias Roman Catholics, Queen of Heaven, and a bastardized version of Mary. And this is supposed to be baby Jesus. But who is that with the crown on his head and the scepter in his hand? Who is that but none other than Tammuz? None other than Tammuz. How could it be anything else? See that? See the crown? By the way, Jesus never took a crown when he came as a baby, did he? He took on the suffering of man. And he died on the cross for sinners. His crown will be when he comes back again. But not here. Not in this time, anyway. So this is the virgin. This is the virgin of Candelaria, or the Our, Our Lady of Candelaria. Celebrates the Virgin Mary on the island of Tenerife, one of the Canary Islands. The center of worship is located in the city of Candelaria. She is depicted as a black Madonna. The Royal Basilica Marine Marian Shrine of Our Lady of Candelaria. La, la, la. Consider the main church dedicated to the Virgin Mary in the Canary Islands, and she is the patron saint of the Canary Islands. Oh, I'm sure she is. She is also patroness of the Western Visayas region enshrined in Jaro Cathedral, the National Shrine of Our Lady. Well, you don't say. According to legendary recorded by Alonso de Espinosa, the statue of Virgin Mary bearing a child in one hand and a green candle in the other was discovered on the beach of Chimise by two Guanche goatherds in 1392. This was before the Castilian conquest of the island. One of the shepherds tried to throw a stone at the statue, but his arms became paralyzed. Sure. The other tried to stab the statue with a knife, but ended up stabbing himself. The statue was taken by local Guanche Mensi to some other place I can't pronounce. Later, Anton, Anton, who had been enslaved and converted to Christianity by the Castilians, <laughs> enslaved and converted, you will convert. That's called Roman Catholic conversion right there. You see, when the papacy converts somebody, they drop a little bit of conversion on them. You will do it or we will twist your body parts off and stretch your legs out that way until there is nothing left and pull your body apart. And if you don't agree to it, we will drag you through the streets naked and feed you to wolves. That's Roman Catholicism. That's the papacy. That's not the Roman Catholic people. The, the average day Roman Catholic people, kindest people you'll ever meet. They really are. They really are. But that's the papacy. That's that. Francis, when you worship false gods, it makes you mean. 
Let's see. The original statue of the medieval Gothic sculpture with dark color and clothing similar to that of the Virgin of Lurch. Oh, Lutch. Sorry. And the Virgin of Monsteret. Well, this is kind of weird. Anyway, so here's who these guys are. Let's see if they say anything else about this here. Our Lady of Candelaria. So, you see how they, they have these these similarities right between Pacamama look at this isn't that interesting hmm earth life harvest farming crops representation of Pacamama in the cosmology according to Juan de Santa Cruz after picture in the Sun Temple. Oh, let's look at that. So this was in the Sun Temple. Looking at the top. One, two, three, four, five. There's the sun. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Boy, you just don't get any weirder, does it, with the occultic stuff with Rome. So anyway, Rome... The Pope decided that he was going to bow down to that and worship that and fill that Amazon temple with that and put those statues in there. So anyway, that's what happened. That's what the Pope's been up to, worshiping false gods, of course. <laughs> you ever want to know what the Pope's up to? You just trace his paganism and you'll find it. He's everywhere. Um, well, South America, yeah, it's heavily mixed with paganism all over it. Yep, absolutely. All the gods are worshipped there like that. Okay. Moving on to more perversion in society. Um, we find this poor boy... And this father, who actually does get some rights, which is a blessing to see. Hopefully it's all upheld. But the Texas governor got in charge, uh, got in, involved with it. Uh, basically, I'm going to read you the article. Here we go. The judge presiding over the case. Okay, so here's the bottom line. Basically, what they're doing is they're taking this. Little seven-year-old boy, his mother, who had in vitro, so she's not really the mother of the baby, but any the boy. Anyway, she did in vitro. She's a doctor. She's separated from her husband, and she wants to turn the boy into a girl. All right? So she wants to turn the boy into a girl. His father, his father has resisted that. She's been trying to do it since he was like three. Well, a jury voted against him. But a judge, a federal judge, overruled it and said the father does have rights. You can't just change the sex of the child and act like the father has no rights. Okay. So the judge presiding over the case of Jeffrey Younger, the father who is trying to protect his seven-year-old son, James, from chemical castration via a gender transition, ruled today the parents will have joint conservatorship over James, which includes making joint medical decisions for the child. Judge Kim Cooks of the 255th District also put a gag order on both parents so they cannot speak to the press about the case and decided the father is not required to pay attorney fees. The judge's decision means that the Save James website will have to be shut down. So they shut the website down, which is understandable. I mean, uh, let's listen to this video here. A Texas judge has just issued an important ruling supporting a father who is trying to protect his seven-year-old son from gender transitioning. I'm Patrick Crane, managing editor of LifeSite News, coming to you with this breaking story. This afternoon, Judge Kim Cooks of the 255th District Court in Dallas decided to give joint custody to seven-year-old James Younger's parents, 
Jeffrey Younger, and Dr. Andrew Goulis. Joe Goulis has been transitioning James into a girl and calling him Luna. And the process would eventually have him taking puberty blockers. So remember the article that we did a few weeks ago when I talked to you about over in England, what they're doing right now? Um, over, over in England, what they're doing is they are killing kids with medicine. 60,000 kids have died from these puberty blockers and all these things that they're giving those children. 60,000 kids have died from that. Right. And literally, look, I, I blame fathers for most, almost everything. I mean, leadership, some men failed somewhere, but the Bible says that judgment would come where women would rule over them, children would oppress them, and all that, okay? But I want you to understand something. That these women... Women today, average women today, are completely scary. They are absolutely scary. And the reason I say that is because they will murder their babies in the womb. They'll murder the babies in the room. They are in their womb. The womb is a tomb. Right? Yeah, it's the womb of doom. That's what it is. That's right. And then if they can't do that, listen, if they can't abort them, and Planned Parenthood is talking garbage about this too and trying to promote this stuff, I believe. I saw something about Planned Parenthood. So what Planned Parenthood says, look, if we can't kill those kids, we're going to stake and satanically mess them up so bad for the rest of their life that they'll never be the same again and they'll hate their life. The boy's father, Jeffrey Younger, maintains that James behaves like a normal boy when he's with him and took the mom to court to protect the boy. On Monday, a jury decided against Jeffrey and to allow the mother to proceed. But today, the judges ruled to grant joint medical decision-making to the two parents, meaning Jeffrey will be able to intervene. She also put a gag order on both parents, preventing them from discussing the case with the media. The jury's decision on Monday, broken first by LifeSite News, sparked international public interest in the case. Many warned that the decision would amount to court-ordered child abuse. So the judge's decision appears to be welcome news. LifeSite has been running a petition to support James and to urge lawmakers to intervene. So far, we have over 60,000 signatures. LifeSite's Madeline Jacob has been on this story from early on and has been in court for the trial since it began on October 15th. She's on the ground outside the courthouse in Dallas now to talk with us about this case and the judge's ruling. So, tell us about the judge's ruling today. What does it mean for James and his twin brother? That's a great question, Patrick. And unfortunately, the uh, you know specifics of the ruling are a little unclear as of right now. We do know that Jeff and Ann were both awarded joint managing conservatorship. So that means that they'll both have a role in these boys' lives. Additionally, medical decision-making, dental decision-making, psychological and psychiatric decision-making will all be split 50-50. And that's a, a, a big victory because that means James won't be allowed to medically transition or to, to go undergo puberty blockers or cross-sex hormone therapy without the consent of his father. And Jeff's already made it very clear that he's not going to provide that consent. So they're really taking chemicals and they're turning these kids into stinking monsters is what they're doing. All they want to do is destroy. That's what the devil does. That's what he does. I'm going to fast forward this here. Let's see. Day after the jury divorce proceeding, very 75 to 100 people to keep people out, to, to keep people away from understanding this ruling, but not that hard because she let Channel 11 come in and film it on video. Texas's governor, Greg Abbott, said yesterday that the state is investigating the case. What, what are you hearing about that? We did see last night that uh, Rand Paul got involved with it too, and so did Texas. Uh, um, Senator Ted Cruz, because they're like, this is appalling what you're doing to this kid, right? And what they're trying to do to this kid is child abuse. That is what they're doing. You know, I mean, if any of us, if we try to raise our kids for the Lord, they want to call it child abuse, right? But 
these guys can take their children and they can transition them. These women can. They can transition them into another sex and destroy their lives. Yet that's fine. That's okay. Think about that for a minute. You know, think of, think about uh, the impact of that. And you can't say my body, my choice. Right. You can't use that argument. Right. Eleven out of twelve jurors decided Monday that Mr. Younger should not be granted sole managing conservatorship over his two twin boys. You know, and she's not even the the she wasn't even the mother. But listen to this: since kindergarten, Doctor Jer, uh, the doctor has enrolled James in school as a girl under the name Luna. Right. When he was just three and testified in court that she began to believe that when he liked a McDonald's toy meant for girls. James pediatrician record, records also indicate that Dr. George Georgilus has met with G Genesis. Wow. A medical transition clinic in Dallas and is considering hormone suppression when James is closer to eight or nine years old. Let's Genesis. Wow. These people are stinking devils. Let's look this up. Shall we? Let me transition this. Look at this. Gender affirming care program. Genesis. Now, if this doesn't make you want to punch monkeys, I don't know what will. Right here. Look at this. Genesis provides comprehensive gender-affirming care to transgender and gender-diverse youth. <laughs> look, you know, look, let me be real with you. Kids don't know what they want to eat when they go to a restaurant. <laughs> kids don't have the capability of making decisions. That's why they're kids, and you have to make their decisions for them. You have to make their decisions for them. Have you ever went to a candy store with a kid? They take an hour and a half. What's my point? Who in the world cares what a seven-year-old wants when it comes to something like this? You're the parent. And when you have a, a psychotic, sick woman, right, and she wants to decide that and she has no sanity... Taking perfectly good body parts and you want to destroy them and ruin them and mutilate them? I don't care if you do it chemically or, or, use, or use a knife on a chopping block. It's still the same thing. You don't get to dress up in a white doctor's coat and call yourself genesis and be able to, and to, be able to change people's bodies and mutilate them and destroy them. Why? Because you have a white jacket on? That gives you the right to do it? Genesis provides comprehensive gender-affirming care. So they may live fulfilling lives within their family. What about all the suicide that goes on with that? What about the fact they want to die years later because they're like, what did I do to myself? Founded in 2015, the Genesis program at Children's Health is the largest program in the, in, in the Southwest with a multi-specialty team of experts. Our team has impacted thousands of youth across the country and is a vital resource for patients, families, and communities. Does this not make you sick? Like there's something like, like you can feel the, the witchcraft. Like you can feel the evil on it. Like you can feel the evil. It, 
I'm just reading it and I can just I, I can like feel the evil. You know what I mean? I, I can feel it. We support youth of all genders, all gender expression identities. Well, there's only two genders, so what what do you I mean it's just like what what your doctors, what are you like insane? Do you have like do you have like um fairies in your brain or something? I mean what's what's wrong with you? Like why why would you think there is more than two genders? You're doctors. And provide evidence based evidence based gender affirming care. What does that mean? A supportive and safe environment. Oh my goodness. It's like you're taking your person, you're taking your child into this place where they stick them in like a, an electric chair. Only they stick them in the chair and they put this helmet on them and they're going to destroy their mind. And you're going in there and you're taking your kid into the electric chair and you're actually killing your child. Because mentally what you're doing is ending that child's life and starting a new one. You are mentally distorting them and disassociating them from what they are. You are transforming their minds. You are stealing their identity. You are Satan. Because that's exact. Listen to me very closely. These people that are doing this are trying to steal those children's identity. They are stealing their minds. They are. These people are witches. That's what they are. Witches use potions. Witches use spells. Witches use psychology. Sorcerers use all of those things to do what they do. So they mix up a chemical, put it in their brains, stick it in their bodies, and steal their identity. That's what Satan came for, to steal and to kill. But Jesus came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Gender identity is unique for every child. Um, no, it's not. I mean, you're either a boy or you're a girl. That's, that's how it works. I mean, it, it doesn't work any other way. You're, you're, either, you're either a boy Or you're, or you're a girl, but there isn't anything else in between. Our care is individualized and developed through collaboration with patients and families. Collaboration. You sound like a YouTube video. Like the kid's like a project. We're all collaborating, like collaborating together, and we're like making devils. We're collaborating. It's our collaboration. I can't believe anybody let those kids, those people touch their children. What are they doing? They're giving their children the fire. I, I don't think you realize what's going on here with this. You got to go deeper than, than the surface here. They are wiping their identity out. Do you understand that? Like, that ought to be illegal. They're wiping their identity out, their children, and they're getting them at a young age. What does the Bible say? Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So Satan knows that principle too. So what are they doing? They're taking them young. And they're destroying their identity. Look, let me ask you a question. How is this any different than satanic ritual abuse? You tell me how it's any different than satanic ritual abuse. I don't want to get into that, that argument, but what I'm saying, uh, into the description of that, but I want you to think about it. 
How is it any different than satanic ritual abuse? Because that's what it is. It's satanic ritual abuse. While Genesis program provides gender-affirming care, it does not perform gender-affirming surgery. Oh, no. You use chemicals. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? Hormone therapy, menstruation suppression, so they can be boys, so they give them medicine, so they can be, so girls don't menstruate and, and they can be boys. That's what they're doing. And they call it children's health with a stinking red balloon on the page. Look at this. Children's health. Oh, my goodness. This is so wicked. This is not health. This is not health, and these people are demons. These people are possessed. They are absolutely possessed. Right, right, evangelist aspiring arborist. That's that's the truth right there. He said he said here we we have a we have a book called Genesis that teaches male and female. They have a devilish place called Genesis that teaches male are female and females are males. Right, it's confusion. It's satanic. And we've already reported. I showed you last week or uh, three weeks ago. I showed you. Go back and listen to that show that I talked about what they're doing over there by the medicine they're giving these kids and it's destroying their lives. These are the witches. They put on white coats and inject people with needles and they are the, they, they are, they are the witches. That's what they are. That's what they're doing. So it's an attack on children. So protect James younger, right? Goes, goes viral. And uh, let's see. Let's see if I can find you that there. This is child abuse. Senator Rand Paul weighs in on James Younger. As Twitchy reported Tuesday, a Texas jury has ruled against a father who's trying to keep his seven-year-old. On Wednesday, a video of a three-year-old James started circulating on social media, showing the child explained to his father what mommy does, putting him in dresses, buying him hair clips, and painting his nails. I'm a girl, he continually tells his father. Look at this. Look what Rand Paul said. We don't let kids drink alcohol till 21. People want to move smoking to age 21. But we will allow a 7-year-old to have his life and body altered like this? This is child abuse, and the state should side with the father who is trying to protect the child. Ron Paul? Rand Paul. Do you see this? It is. It's child abuse. Let's see if that video, if they show, oh, they might take, here it is. They might. Stay. You're a boy, right? No. I'm a girl. Who told you you were a girl? Mommy. <clears throat> when did she tell you you were a girl? Because I love girls. Oh, I see. So mommy told you you were a girl? Uh-huh. Um, any, does mommy um, do anything else like with a girl with you? Mm-hmm. Like what? Like just this. What, what does she do? She do puts them on me. She puts dresses on you? Oh, wow. And what else does she do? She buys my headbands. Uh-huh. And, and, <clears throat> and she gets me hair clips. Oh, hair clips? Okay. Mm -hmm. What else? Some microphones. What else? Like a skeleton. Does she do anything with your fingers? Yeah. What? She paints my nails. So that, why does she do that? Because I love my nail polish. Oh. 
So mommy puts you in a dress and puts nail polish on you? Mm -hmm. and, and what does mommy tell you? She tells me I'm a girl. Oh, okay. Do you think you're a girl? Uh-huh. You do? Is that why you wear this, so that you can have long hair? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh. It makes me sick. Do you see? Do you see what the woman... She's a witch. That's what she's doing. She's manipulating that boy and trying to turn him into a girl because she probably wanted a girl and didn't have a girl and she had two boys twin boys so that's what she did my three-year-old son tells me he had, he had, he's at my home he tells me that he's a girl and i had the presence of mind thank goodness to pull out my iphone and videotape me asking him about that and that was literally the first time i really understood what was happening to my son younger said oh my goodness i would be so oh man that was the first time i noticed that he was just past his third birthday three years old Younger believed his ex-wife, Anne uh, Georgilis, was only giving James love the affection if he acted like a girl and was putting my son into timeouts if he, and she would lock him in his room and say that monsters only eat boys. Wow. So that's what she was using. Fear tactics. Fear tactics. She uses fear on that kid. On her own son to make him a girl. These people are wicked, man. So the Texas governor said, uh, whoa, I didn't know that was there. Stinking perverts. There. Then it doesn't show any article at all bunch of pervs huh no this is a bunch of perverts man i hate news news companies nowadays man you can't you can't look at anything they're a bunch of stinking perverts somebody needs to get I, I need to figure out the right blockers on there where you can actually read an article okay anyway um it is another level of messed up. It's wicked. It's vile is what it is. So Rand Paul and others obviously are like, no, you can't do that. You can't. I mean, it's child abuse to take a child like that and do that. Well, look at this lady. Wait, let me see this. Oh, that's one. Oh, that's another one we're going to talk about. Woman renounces transgender lifestyle after turning to Christ. A woman who lived as a man for 11 years. Oop, let me let me switch over here for you so you can see that. A woman who lived as a man for 11 years has spoken about how she came to accept her biological sex after first accepting Christ. Kathy Grace Duncan professed faith in Christ in her 20s and eventually renounced her trans lifestyle. She says now she now wants to help people in similar situations understand who God created them to be. From a young age, Kathy Grace believed that she had been born in the wrong body. At the age of 19, she felt her only option was to transition to a man. She started calling herself Keith. She took male hormones and underwent surgery. However, after being invited to a youth group, Kathy professed faith in Christ. She initially continued to live as a man, her church unaware of her true identity, but after eventually being challenged by her church, she admitted that she was a woman living as a man. She realized that she needed to be a woman that God created her to be. She had medical treatment to reverse some of the earlier changes. It is now 26 years since she stopped living as a man. The process to undo the damage from male hormones took years. She now says, I really want to help others to understand who they are. Not who they might falsely believe they are, but who they are truly, as God created them to be. 
Earlier this month, it was revealed that hundreds of young people who have transitioned from one sex to another are regretting their choice. Charlie Evans was born female, but lived as if she were a man for nearly a decade before accepting her true sex and detransitioning last year. After going public, she was contacted by hundreds of young adults who similarly doubt their decision to change sex, but are in need of support networks to help them. What a mess. What a absolute mess. It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible what's going on. What they're doing to these kids and the push that they have for all these things. It's just, it's disgusting. But it's confusion, and that's what Satan wants. Remember, uh, Remember we talked about, I think it was last week. Remember Peter 2.0? What was his name again? Oops. Let's see if there's any update on Peter 2.0 here. I want to check while I'm... Well, it doesn't look like. Uh, let's see if he. Let's see if he's on Twitter. If he says anything new. This was October 9th. This is my last po post as Peter 1.0. Tomorrow I trade my voice for potentially decades of life to be complete the final medical procedure of my transitioning to full cyborg. The month I was told statistically I would be dead. I'm not dying. I'm transforming. Oh, how I love science! Wow. It doesn't appear. Let's see. It doesn't. It doesn't appear that there's an update. Let me see if there is one on his website. Let's see. I'm just curious if there's an update on Peter 2.0. This is part of the transformation. Let's see here. Well, he doesn't have an update yet, so I don't see an update on Twitter, so maybe he died. Maybe that maybe maybe Satan Satan tricked him and he died. What do you think? Think that's possible? I think so. Or what comes out after that is going to be a devil. Yeah. Let's see. This was uh, October 11th. I'm just looking to see if there's anything added. That's the 14th. Yeah. Yeah, today's the 25th. So I don't see anything new about the cyborg. So who knows? But anyway, I thought I'd check on that to see if there was anything new about the the cyborg Peter 2.0. Hmm. Let's see here. Okay. All right. So let's go to the next story that I want to talk about. Another attack on children here. Here's drag queens who want to act, want access to your children linked to Satanism and occult practices. So remember when we showed you that the Bible shows us that there's a link between these false god worship, right? The false worship that is there. And then there's a link between that and there's a link uh, between um, 
the sexual rituals and and the satanic order and everything like that. Well, and I don't I think LifeSite News is Catholic, so I'm not really a promoter of them, but it's just an article that's there. So men who dress as women love Halloween and not just for the costume opportunities. They are often I wonder why I can't do that. That annoys me so much. Oh, there we go. They are often keenly attuned to the dark spirits of the season and willing to do those spirits bizarre, depraved bidding. It is one more reason to keep vulnerable children away from homosexual gender indoctrination sessions, drag tutorials, and parents excluded safe sex discussions at your local library. Whoever thought the local library would be like that? You know, it's just unbelievable. The library is such a good resource for any records that you need, historically for books and everything. Drag queens are scary, are a scary presence for little kids. The young mesmerized faces hearing the allegedly inclusive lessons and watching the sexual gyrations tell the real story. Something strange in this neighborhood, and youngsters get it, even if their clueless parents giggle and nod alongside with, with corrupted librarians. How do you laugh and giggle at that? If that pervert was around my kid, I'd want to punch him right in the stinking face. If he started dancing and wiggling his butt around my kids, I, I'm telling you, I don't know what I would do. But it, it'd be on like Donkey Kong. I can tell you that right now. I'd be getting my kids out of there. And if he put one little one little gyration towards my kid, he'd be on the ground. I'm going to tell you that right now. I believe in self-defense and defense of the young. The truth is gender benders, public readings, and sexualized performances are often influenced by an otherworldly realm. It turns out that many drag identifiers follow paganism, witchcraft, or Satanism. Oh, that's not a surprise, is it? They don't even try to hide the close connection. For instance, the re a recent tweet, the Church of Satan says, we can confirm that, a, that there are a lot of satanic drag queens, and they are fabulous. Here you go. Why do they like that? Because of confusion. They love confusion. That's why. They're a bunch of stinking devils. That's why. And they love confusion. And the San Francisco-based Satanic Temple is made up of mostly of LGBTQ identifiers. Yeah, they all look queer. I mean, they look gay or nades. I've met all those guys. I had them come down in, in, uh, in Minneapolis. I had them all oppose me when I was preaching outside of different areas and things like that. They're so not scary. They're too right? Much. We don't need to arrest them. Right. They didn't work. And then this crazy big guy came from Parts Unknown. Like Andre the Giant. Yeah. The Undertaker. Yeah. He came from like parts unknown and he came he came out of nowhere and he was just like dun 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 and he came and this music. this this dude, I mean it's almost he literally he looked like Hillbilly Jim. This guy did. And he and the satanic temple was like I there was a bunch of witches there. They were all like controlling this guy. And Anyway, so here come this big dude, and I mean, he was big. And it was like, he came out, and he had a stinking, was it an axe? What did that guy have in his hand? Hammer. Oh, he had a hammer like Thor. He was like a hillbilly Jim slash Thor, and he pulls his hammer out, and he comes down, ho, oh, like I saw Jim Duggan. I mean, that's what it was like. It was crazy. I'm like, you can't even make this up, and he was coming after... He was coming for me, and my dad got in an argument with him and was trying to hold him back and everything. And dad's like, I'm not afraid of you, big boy. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> so dad gets right in his face, and they do like the, the WrestleMania twirl, right? <laughs> this guy's huge, man. The guy was huge, and dad's like headbutting him right in his Dad's like got his head right in his face. Oh, man. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make it up, can you, Luke? It was all real. You can't make it up. It really happened. I'll tell you what. If I ever write a book someday, there's going to be a lot of people afraid. But that's all I got to say about that. Anyway. <laughs> 
And the San Francisco-based Satanic Temple is made up of LGBTQ, even holding a pink mass. That's not gay. A movie, a movie made about the group is called Hail Satan, where the leaders say they'll fight Christian conservatives to the death. What are you going to do, scratch them with your nails? Are they serious about following Satan? Who knows? Who cares? And it's true, they're not. They're not really Satanists, but they're all being used by Satan. The real Satanists don't promote themselves. Right. They're just being used by Satan. A drag devil partnership is popping up everywhere. There are reports of Austin, which is the weirdest place in the world. Keep Austin weird. There are reports of Austin, Texas area drag followers engaging in occult rituals, including black masses in public parks to hex two city council members. Well, that doesn't that shouldn't surprise you at all, should it? Uh, to hex two city council members, courageous people who publicly objected the perverted story hours. But you can go ahead, man, go ahead. Send your whole stinking gay army. All right? I will preach the devil out of you. Send your stinking gay army with your drag garbage. And I will, pre- I will take 15 of my guys and we will stink it. We will preach the gospel and the law. And we will preach that to you right outside of your gay convention. Don't just sing it, bring it. That's what I got to say, because I have no problem with preaching against your stinking, wicked, devilish garbage from the pit of hell. I ain't no politician. I don't need to get elected. All right. And a church in Chula Vista was vandalized in September with satanic symbols. Some of the members had spoken out against local drag queen events. Anna Bohawk, the 500 Mom Strong Leader, wrote about this movement. Long gone are the characters of drag queens as clown, clownishly quaint entertainment for a subgroup of a subgroup of sexually isolated fetish followers. Nowadays, they want, nay, they demand that you openly declare your support for their desires, which is focused like a laser beam on your children. See, they, they go after kids. They go after kids. what they do because they're a bunch of cowards in long beach california 2017 photo surface of a devil horned librarian presenter who one homosexual website dubbed a satanic goddess there it is and you don't think they're devils i think we could see they're devils One, uh, quickly dismissed as a joke, one has to ask, so what? Does any discerning parent want someone to read books to their children? But, okay, let's just be real. Put, I'm putting me in the wide shot. All right. All right, now listen. First of all, clowns are creepy enough. And, like, I don't know any kid that wants a clown to read them books. So then when you got a satanic... Dude dressed like a chick that is like a pervert that wants to read that that's doing like lap dances and like and like gyrating their hips and acting like they're at a strip club. Who puts that together with reading books to children? I'll tell you who perverts. That's who devil possessed perverts. A photo surface of this. Yeah, okay, we talked about it. The weapons of their warfare are not carnal indeed, but neither are ours. And ours are far mightier. In the meantime, parents must keep speaking out and standing up, and more so are doing. Families also need discernment to understand how commonplace and mainstream sorcery has become and how likely it is your children will come face-to-face with these practices in their everyday lives. At least 1.5 million Americans are witches and pagans, according to some reports. Current politics drive some occult activities with LGBTQ identifiers often leading the charge. Hexes and curses against conservative politicians. Dakota Brachiel, a 29-year-old transgender queer witch and co-owner of the Catlin Books Witch Shop in Brooklyn, is pleased with the outcome of the ritual hex they placed on U.S. Supreme Court Justice Brent Kavanaugh. Another man, Michael Hughes, has been organizing witchcraft rituals to bind Donald Trump since 2017, and is doing it so this year, a week before Halloween. He 
He's gonna bind Donald Trump. Flu, I bind you. I bind the orange one. You consider yourself bound, orange one. <laughs> oh, so isn't it interesting that witches are trying to bind people and it sounds like charismatics? Flu, I bind you. There's nothing better than a, than, than a southern lady saying that, by the way. Don't get mad at me if you're from down south. You should laugh. I make fun of northerners all the time. But it is funny because you if you if you have the accent, you can say anything and make it sound great. Like if a boring white guy from from up north says flu, I bind you. It sounds like nothing. But when you say it like this, flu, I bind you. When you say it like that, it has some it has some. It just has some ump to it. Binding the orange one is the goal here. So those who claim that Halloween is just about candy and costumes need to think again. It's shaping as a significant force and not in a positive direction. Yep. Anyway, so. But apparently there's a new venue of child propaganda, college campuses. Michigan State University recently held a drag event for little children. Oh, my goodness. It's just, it's, it's mind-boggling. Isn't it? It's mind-boggling that that a, a university would hold that. Like they don't have anything else to do, so let's have a let's have a drag queen. L look at this. Red and dance to kids. Look. Why? Monette tells children everybody says boo to guns. Boo. Well, Monette's gay. So they actually use drag queens celebrating National Come Out Day in an MSU dorm with few student attendees. On the Friday, October 11th in McDonald Hall, drag queens ACO Aviance and Kajmone read stories to mostly children and parents. Like, what parents decided that they would get up in the morning? You know, we don't have nothing to do today. I think we'll head to the library and and have drag queens read books to us. Like, who does that? Whose day is like that? Whose day start? What sane person's day starts out like that? You know... Instead of going to a park, I think I'll take my kids to a drag show. Who does that? The event Time to Read Drag Storytelling was hosted by the LGBTQ Resource Center. MSU Student Parent Resource Center. Yeah, the MS Yeah, that's a really good one, I bet. The night began with a dramatic entrance of Aviance and Monet took the stage in their colorful outfits and style. Aviance described drag as an expressive art form and compared it to some historical examples. She said whether it's jesters or shaman. Oh. Every culture has the experience of getting into costume. Oh, shaman? You mean like a wizard? Like a shaman priest? The children's books portrayed a message of LGBTQ pride. Oh, so it's not about reading. It's about indoctrinating them. When is Bible study hour at MSU? I'm curious. When is reading the children Bible study hour? When's that? I want to go to that. I'll go there. I'll go to Bible study hour. The children's book portrayed a message of LGBTQ pride, a love for flair and color and hardships people in the culture faced. Yeah. Try being a, a white man in America, a Christian white male in America. Talk about hardships. You're just pretty much hated for waking up in the morning. Aviance's book described a Pride Month parade and celebration, banners swaying and children playing. 
Love, not hate. These people just got married. Isn't that cool? Marriage equality. The day in June, we're all united. Man, it just sounds so gay. Monet tells, story tells of a boy named Gilbert from Kansas who overcomes a gray and dull life. When he refuses to use a fireman, firearm in the military, Monet tells the children, Everybody say boo to guns! Boo! When Gilbert reaches San Francisco, he can finally breathe and he is color and be his colorful, sparkly, glittery self. <laughs> After the readings, the Queens performed a drag show style dance for the crowd. You know that drag shows are in strip clubs, right? They're in like gay bars and strip clubs, but no, now they're in public libraries. So then I think what we need to do, since, since they get to have that, then we ought to demand that we have Bible study groups in libraries, and we ought to push that. That's what we should do. After the readings, many questions concerned the Queen's stage performances and acceptance of their identity. They both told the crowd it was difficult to come into their true identities, but that they are better for it now. What's your true identity? I encourage all of you to love yourself and live your best life ever. Okay, thanks, Joel Olstein. Live your best life now. When asked about what drag means to them, Avian said, moments like these are what make it all worth it. I'm touching people's lives. How? For many of my friends, some of them are suicidal. Well, well duh! Whoops. Why do you think your friends are suicidal? They're suicidal because of what you're doing. Because you're trying to be something that you're not. So why is this allowed in a funded, a publicly funded institution? Think about it. Yet the red flags didn't end there. One of the transvestites introduced the MSU act by discussing male crossing dresses through the ages. He, a shaman is essentially a witch doctor. We talked about that. Why should people care? It's a matter of keeping our children away from spiritual and sexual risk. Predatory adults have some very noticeable traits. They manipulate situations where they can be close to children. They have few or no boundaries, sexual, social, or spiritual. Drag queens insist on close contact with other people's children and instantly dismiss parental or taxpayer concerns. Should we trust these people? Absolutely not. Right? And they should be out outraged. Uh, let's see. Oops. Well, here you go. Check this out. Pennsylvania Public School to build multi-million dollar gender neutral changing facility. Taxpayer dollars are being used to demolish an existing boys and girls locker and replace them with gender neutral changing facility. Easter Lancaster County School District is spending $2.4 million after community backlash when a student identity identifying as transgender was using a locker room that did not match their biological sex. The Eastern Lancaster School Board received backlash over the 2018-2019 school year, during which it allowed a transgender boy to use the boys' restroom as well as the boys' locker room. The $2.4 million renovation plan for Garden Spot High School includes the design of four zones that will hold 48 private changing rooms and 76 private showers. Because of the showers will be private, they can also double as changing rooms, making a total of 124, 000, 124 excuse me, changing rooms under the new plan. So instead of using like logic, what do you have to do? You, instead of saying, nope, you're a boy, you're a boy, you're a girl, you're a girl, you can't do that. School board members implied that addressing LGBTQ issues took precedence over teachers, salaries, and new educational material and implementing educational-based policies. So stupid. 
As a result of this decision, the district spending is spending 2.5 times more money on the pro-LGBT renovation than anticipated. Right. The school board stressed that they will do whatever is possible to accommodate the LGBTQ community. The sod mob. They got to they got to support the sod mob. They got to they have to. So, in other words, basically, you know, they're they're going to do whatever they have to to make those people happy. Because these are indoctrination centers. That's what they are. They're indoctrination centers. So, that's real life, friend. That's what's going on in our world today. I'm glad to see that some of these transgenders are turning from that, though. Yeah, there's quite a few. There are. There's, there's a list of them that are starting to turn from them. Wow. Wow. New news here today. Son of Grammy winning rapper Toby Mac found dead. Truett Foster McKean, the oldest son of Christian rapper Toby Mac, died Wednesday in Nashville, a representative confirmed. Responded morning to report a person that is cardiac arrest at his home. McKean was pronounced dead on arrival. McKean's cause of manner of death remain under investigation. The Metro Police said an autopsy will be conducted. Toby Mac, known as Kevin Michael. In the statement, Toby Mac said his son had joy that took the room when he entered it. He was a magnetic son and brother and friend. If you met him, you knew him. You remembered his smile, him, his smile, his laugh. The encouragement he offered with words or even without. He had untamable grand personality and dreams to match. I don't know what happened to him. It's kind of weird for somebody that young to have cardiac arrest, to be honest with you. But who knows? I don't know if it's drugs or not, but... You know, but there it is. And uh, sad to hear somebody else died. I, I know Toby Max. Toby Max music is. Bet you doesn't feel it in his heart. Feel it in his soul. <laughs> yeah, Toby Max music is terrible. Um, it's terrible. It's not biblical music at all. You know. Anyway, so bad stuff. But well, let's see here. I'm, I'm pretty much done with what I have, so I can look and see if anybody has any questions or anything over here. If you have any, then we could talk about that. Anything? You know, there, there, there's one more. Let's see, where was that? I don't know what I did with that, but there was another one. Oh, I don't know what I did with it, but. Anyway, there there was another one, but we'll talk about that next week about about uh, suicide and things like that of that nature. That uh, children suicide and the 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 sad sad increase in that is pretty bad. Uh, don't forget to check out our sermon audio page. I know I'll switch it. This was the latest broadcast that we did. I think Luke's going to put some sermons on here uh, today. we got to update a bunch of sermons. I just put a couple of them on there. But um, they got to be updated there. But um, check out there for the archives if you want sermons upon sermons upon sermons. There are plenty of them there. I think there's over, I think there's like, I don't know, 1,000, 1,400. There's a lot of sermons. Um, 1,400 sermons. So a lot to... A lot to uh, listen to. Um, there are series as you can listen to as well. Let's see if I can find that button there. Here we go. 
tons of there are a lot of them are in series format. So if you're looking for more sermons, these are broadcast. Keep in mind. Somebody said something to me. Well, it's hard to listen to these and so. Well, these are broadcast. So they uh, high capacity shovel ask a question. Is it true that you don't put your Sunday services on YouTube anymore? That is correct. I do not. I don't put them live. We put them on later. We put them, we put them on later, but I don't do live services. But all of the the sermons are accessible after the service. Yep. I quit quit doing services live. I just don't like it. And I do three broadcasts a week, so um Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I do three broadcasts a week, so I, I kind of think that's enough as far as live stuff goes. But let's see. Here's all the different ones. Marriage, OPBC, online stuff, um, broadcasts. This is a big series, Practical Biblical Warfare. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know where that is, Lisa. Lisa said, I can't find the one about Harlot Rome where you have visuals of their chariots. I don't know where that is either. Hmm. I have a bad memory, so it would take me a while to remember that. Where that would be at. Exactly. Yeah, but she's talking about a certain... I think it's a video. Let's see. Some of these are... I got to go back through these and put them in into order. Uh, or put these into sermon format, because a lot of them aren't in sermon format, so I need to do that sometime. I really do. I just haven't done that. Uh, this is another good one for your home. Timeless Truths for the Home. Go back and listen to some of those. I think they would be a help to you. That was a good series on the home. I have these five-minute devotions. I did 188 of them, it looks like. I might have done more. I thought I did 200, but maybe I didn't. But maybe they're not in there. But anyway, those are on the Psalms, a lot of them in different devotions that I did. They're little three-minute, four-minute devotions. So you can listen to those too as well. Those might be a blessing to you. Um, don't forget about the Expository Preaching and Acts series. We've got, there's 20 of these up here now. There's more coming. Yeah, we got to put them on. Yeah. But we, we got to update a bunch of sermons and get that kind of going there, which we will do. I've got some back projects that I need to get on there, too, that I have not put on there yet. Um, but I will. Soon. There's some projects that we want to do that... I need to get on there, but I haven't got them ready yet. So I, I got to do it. I, uh, I've got to go back and look through some. There's some work that Luke has to do with pictures and a few other things, some PowerPoints and all that kind of stuff. So uh, wow, I, I, can't, I can't believe we've had 12 of those broadcasts on charismatic history. Probably more than that. Yep. We'll be continuing with the charismatic history, too. We'll pick that back up. I'm going to go do some running around I've with my wife today. We're going to go out and um, spend some time together here for a little while. And um, 
I got pretty much everything done for the day. Get ready for, let's see, next week we'll be here. I don't know what the deals with this. It looks like it shut off. that is we will be leaving next not next week but it'll be the week after that so i will probably do a broadcast that wednesday i will do a broadcast that wednesday and then that'll be the last broadcast for about 10 days actually yeah about 10 11 days so I'll be taking a lot of time off. I'm trying to write all my sermons and get all that done before I put together all my sermons before I leave. And then um, so I don't have to work on anything on the road where I'm just reading my Bible and praying and then just relaxing. So that's what I need to do. That's what we'll be doing. So we'll be heading through there. Um out to the Smoky Mountains, so you pray for us, but pray that all goes well. Um, other than that, be in prayer for the evangelism this weekend, as we, tomorrow, we preach and we tract and pray for the printing and all that, but um, keep us in prayer there, the Lord would bless us and keep us. And keep our equipment running well. We need that for sure. But anyway, so you all have a good weekend. If there's no questions, if everybody's doing good there, then I will just get off of here. And we'll just let it go here. And um, I wonder who's on here. Let me take a look here. Carl, Cynthia, Lisa, Joe, Jesse Scruggs. Betty, um, Janine, Tracy, Howard, Allison, who is high capacity shovel? Carl Winters, Big Whale, Cindy Colon, hmm. Big Whale, who's Big Whale? Oh, PowerPoint for Israel star video. Uh, Luke has put that together when he has time. For that star of rib fast. When he gets some time, he'll put that together. But uh, it takes a while to get all those done. Let's see. Big Whale keeps saying me. I'm like, who's Big Whale? He said me. Me. Well, praise the Lord. Well, we will talk to you all then next week. Have a good weekend. Did you ever have a rapper alias Big Whale? Or are you talking about me? Talking about big whale? Yeah. All right, everybody. We'll see.